what's your doctorate? Factology. You can't just make something up and then make yourself a doctor of it. It's not how it works. It has to be given by an institution. But a real one, not... Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I, as always, am your host, Simon. Why I'm here, one of my writers in this case, Kevin, has written me a video. Most... More conspiracy theories that you weren't supposed to believe. Um, we are beating the sh it's out of a dead horse right now, aren't we? Because you know what happens? Conspiracy theory videos, people watch them. And when there is a video that gets lots of views, I'm like, let's make more of that thing because I'm creatively bankrupt and a terrible person. This is now the fourth Brain Blaze episode in a row I've written on various conspiracy. I'm sorry, Kevin, but people want it. They love it, Kevin. Give the people what they want. Though God only knows when or in what order any of these videos will be released. Me neither. I just, I, I record them and then they enter the big machine. And at some point they come out and I'm like, good. <laughs> okay. I'm not complaining because I love my job, but after spending a couple of weeks reading basically nothing but conspiracy literature, it's hard to know what to believe anymore. Well, Kevin, it's, it's very easy. Don't believe any of the conspiracy literature, unless it's to do with the JFK assassination, because that, as we've discussed, and you as well, Kevin, believe, that shit's weird. There's definitely something going on there. I don't know what it is. Like, I don't believe the crazy conspiracy theories, but I'm like, it's weird. There's something else to that. Was the moon landing actually faked? Did extraterrestrials crash land on a farm just outside of Roswell, New Mexico? Are they turning the freaking frogs gay? Well, Kevin, I'll help you out right now. No, no, and no. None of those things. You're welcome. Obviously, the answers are no, no, and yes. Oh, no, the frogs, not the frogs, Kevin. Okay, fine, the frogs weren't being turned gay, but the pesticide atrazine was dramatically lowering the testosterone levels in male frogs, chemically castrating them, and in 10% of cases, even turning them into female frogs that could produce offspring with other male frogs. Holy sh**. <laughs> okay. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. Alex Jones was wrong. But he could have gone with a more, even more compelling line. That is from an actual research out of UC Berkeley. <laughs> What sort of school is that? Use it. Berkeley. Never heard of it. Nonsense. That was published in a peer review journal. Pfft. Peer review. What's that ever been good for? Five years after the infamous rants. I'm no Alex Jones fan, but I honestly think we can let him have that one. You're welcome, Alex. I know you were just waiting for my approval, Alex. I know you're sitting there in prison. I know you're not in prison. I know, I know it was a civil case or whatever, and he got like the billion dollars in fines or whatever. Um, I know you were just sitting there waiting for my approval, Alex. You're welcome. Luckily, today we are going to be dealing with conspiracies that have polarized the public and turned us all against one another. Instead, we're just going to look at the crazy rantings of a lone nut job with no supporters and a conspiracy that was created entirely as a joke. The Time Cube. Similar to Rome didn't exist from the last time we discussed this topic, I think the creator of the Time Cube genuinely believed that incoherent nonsense what genuinely believed that genuinely believed that incoherent nonsense Time up genuinely believed the incoherent nonsense that he was preaching. Fortunately, just like with the previous example, I'm pretty sure he was the only person in the entire world who actually believed the things he was saying. I've vaguely heard of this. Probably because we've probably made a video about this before, because as I think I mentioned, conspiracy theories do well, so I do more of them. The, 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 yeah. Time Cube was the brainchild, <laughs> if he has a brain, of Dr. Oh God, apparently he does. It could be a doctor of guitar or something. Of Dr. Otis Eugene G. Ray. Note that the doctor title is one that he began using after bestowing himself with the degree of Doctorate of Cubism. You can't cu cubicism? You can't just give yourself a doctorate. I'm not like Dr. Simon. What's your doctorate? Factology. You can't just make something up and then make yourself a doctor of it. It's not how it works. It has to be given by an institution. But a real one, not Berkeley. Yes idiots. In most of Europe, this would be a big no-no, but in America, doctor is not a protected title, so anybody can use it if they want to. No! Really? That's f***ing shady. <laughs> Don't do that. I mean, not people. I, I mean, the country of America. Get your shit together and protect that. You can't just allow people to choose the title doctor. Gene lived a pretty ordinary life. He was an electrician and an inventor, and he even had a US patent titled Marble Game Resembling Golf. Dude, playing golf with marbles is going to end badly. For the vast majority of his life, it turns out that he was just a regular Joe with a regular job that thought he had a million dollar invention, but was clearly wrong. Pretty typical stuff, really. But then something happened. It's not entirely clear when or how Gene went insane. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god, he did, didn't he? But he allegedly must have. Allegedly. In August of 1997, he registered the domain www.timecube.com, where he could teach the time cube theory and save the world from the poison of oneism that was being taught by academia. You are off your rocker, mate, aren't you? Like, when people just suddenly go crazy like this, it's just, did a little thing go wrong in your brain? Did you have one of those little blood vessels? Like, and then it's like, oh, now you don't have fucking reasoning, logic, intelligence. <laughs> According to his theory, every day was actually four days taking I have heard of this! Oh, maybe it's because Kevin and I discussed this like a week ago. <laughs> oh, he might have had a little p in his brain, but I don't have a brain. Uh, but slightly out of phase with one another, oneism was the evil doctrine that time contained but a single day. The website remained online until 2016, a year after Gene's eventual death from cancer, and you can find an archive of it on the Wayback Machine if you really would. <laughs> don't, no. <laughs> Why? Way back. Can't you get rid of the sh ones? Way back. Must you just be like, that's not worth archiving. It's not like, you know, people aren't archiving, you know, like weird Harry Potter sexualized fan fiction, are they? That sh is just, well, sh in the digital world, it probably is being archived, isn't it? But back in the day before this, people would just burn that sh in fires. And now we have to have everything forever, including sh like this. <laughs> You can, but I don't recommend it. You see, the original TimeCube site was a 1997 website designed by a then 70-year-old man. It absolutely looks like that. Over the years, the text on the page would be updated, but the layout never changed, which makes it borderline impossible to read. That's probably for the best anyway, because Gene's ideas were more than a little out there. I'd love to explain to the, you the TimeCube theory properly, but that would be impossible. Gene uses so much jargon that he invented without ever actually defining his made-up terms that the site is practically like reading a foreign language. But don't take my word for it. Let Gene explain it to you himself. Let's quote Gene, shall we? This is going to be... Why do I do this? Why do I do this to my... Why does Kevin do this to me? And I mean I pay Kevin, so... Why do I do this to myself? Until you can tear and burn the Bible to escape the evil one, it will be impossible for your educated stupid brain to know that four different corner harmonic 24-hour days rotate simultaneously within a single four-quadrant rotation of a squared equator and cubed Earth. What was that? <laughs> That's the sound of my brain getting the thing that this prick had. The solar system, the universe, the Earth, and all humans are composed of plus zero antipodes and equal to nothing if added as a one or entity. What the f is this? It, I feel like this dude. What's that drug that you take where you think you've worked it out? Like, um, what's that? It, I think Joe Rogan goes on about this, and he's like, "Yeah, but any anyone who's done this, bro, they know there's like other." I've said, uh, how does Joe Rogan talk? Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, Joe. I can't do Joe Rogan. I'm not going to try and do Joe Rogan. Do it. But he's always like, yeah, and then once you're in that world, it's like something else. You know there's more out there. And it's like, no, Joe, it's chemicals in your brain, Joe, and everyone else who thinks that something's happened. It hasn't. I've never done it, um, which doesn't in any way take away from my argument, because my argument is based on fucking science. Uh, what, was we, what were we talking about? Oh my god, I don't even care. I'm sorry. I know I should care. I really should care. I know I should care. But I don't. I mean, how could you possibly dispute logic as sound as that? You can't, and Gene knew it. That's why he decided to put his money where his mouth was and offer $10,000 to anyone who could scientifically prove that the time cube theory and the four days were not real. You can't prove a negative. What the f*** are you talking about? How small is your brain? Of course, he would be the sole judge on whether or not someone succeeded in their proof, and they would have to do it within the confines of his warped logic, so good luck with that. I mean, good luck with it anyway, and then good luck where he's like, no, actually, ha <laughs> ha no, no. At first, when I was reading all about this, I, I thought it was satire. I figured it was written by some old dude using the internet to have a laugh by copying the conspiracy theory formula perfectly. Unfortunately, there's enough genuinely hateful language that it seems impossible that this theory was meant as parody. The page is filled with homophobic, racist, and anti-Semitic comments. I don't understand how, when there is a conspiracy theory, whatever it is, this conspiracy theory is about fitting four days into one day. And it's like, but still, f*** 
fucks the Jews. The Jew, I love everyone. I'm done with the classifications. In addition to the frequent use of homophobic slurs, which were often directed at God himself. <laughs> God. <laughs> He's super gay. He's the gayest. Nothing wrong with that. Just God's super gay. Super gay. Gene stated, I know now why the Jews deserve their Holocaust. Oh, okay. As well as claiming that all great civilizations, including America, had been destroyed by minorities. In terms of just general insanity, he also claimed that it was not immoral for students to kill all educators who ignore nature's harmonic time cube. You, you, are, you, you have had that, like, pfft. your brain wasn't just like, pfft. it was like, pfft and then it slopped out of his ears you know that time where it's like you know in a movie where someone's they, they're like and then look at their hands and there's blood running down it's like that's always like in real life you've got a nosebleed in a movie your brain's as as jeans but really how much attention could this guy possibly have gotten with a poorly designed website full of absolute nonsense his page definitely had over a million views in the first few years breaking the site's view counter if you don't remember what exactly the internet was like i can't stress enough how impressive that many page views for a random nothing site would have been gene who in addition to giving himself a phd also gave himself the title of wisest man on earth was also invited to speak about his time cube theory at both mit Well, what do they know? And the Georgia Institute of Technology. Although it's important to note that these were student-run events that almost certainly invited him for a laugh. Oh, thank God. I was actually worried for a second. All right. Hey, Gene, thanks so much, and good luck with your quest to convince humanity of the Time Cube principle. Thank you. Gene had not actually been invited by the faculty. There's a lot of other wacky stuff on the site, such as maths is stupid and evil and belly buttons disprove the existence of God, but of all the things Gene wrote as part of his conspiracy theory, perhaps none was as prescient than this. A psychiatrist examining by behavior, eccentric by his academic single corner knowledge, knows no course other than to judge me schizophrenic. <laughs> but at least some good was able to come out of all of this. The Time Cube Theory was the inspiration for the song To the End of the World by the pirate metal band Alastorm. Nah, what the, I have not heard of this band. I have not heard of this song. I have not heard of this fucking genre. Pirate metal? Yes, Simon, pirate metal is an actual genre. And whether you like the music or not, we can all agree that the fact something like that can exist is fantastic. Sure, I'll give him that. I'll give it that. Yeah, go on then. All right, that's Gene Ray offering up wisdom for the ages. Back to the Future predicted 9-11. Ooh, this is interesting. I'm, I'm, Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies. And 9-11's my favorite terrorist. <laughs> ah, just joking. Why did that come out of my mouth? Too soon. Way too soon. We started with a theory that was meant to be real but was taken as a joke, and now it's time for a theory that was meant to be a joke but some people have taken it to be real. I actually hadn't heard about this theory until Simon sent me a link about it, and all I can say is thank you. You're welcome, Kevin. First published in 2015, shortly before the release of the film The Walk, the short documentary explains how Back to the Future predicted 9-11, and it's one of the most brilliantly put, to thing put together things I've ever seen. Kevin, I never watched it. I probably went on ChatGPT <laughs> and asked for some ideas for like conspiracy theories that people weren't supposed to believe, and this one came up. And by probably, I mean that's exactly what I did. <laughs> to think that I actually have a creative bone in my body, please. <laughs> please, that's what ChatGPT's for. The action in the original Bags of the Future began at the Twin Pines Mall. The Twin Pines Mall represent the Twin Towers, and the digital clock at the front of the mall read 1.16am. But when turned upside down, it read 9.11. <laughs> Okay, okay. So the action began in the Twin Pines, aka the Twin Towers, on 9-11 with a surprise attack by Muslim terrorists. They were, well, I don't know what, they, weren't they Libyan terrorists? I mean, they could be Muslim. Um, I don't know what the majority religion of Libya is. It's probably Muslim. Islam, isn't it? Um, okay, given that, Marty was able to escape to the year 1955, but as a result of the terrorist attack, the Twin Pines had been destroyed. Had it? Did that happen? In the future, it had become the Lone Pine. Ah, oh, one of the twin pines, like not the mall, but one of the trees, representing one World Trade Center that was built in place of the Twin Towers. Once in the year 1955, Marty was carrying with him essential information about the future. Not only did he know that Doc Brown would die as a result of a sudden terrorist attack, but he knew the exact date and time that the clock tower would be struck by lightning. The tower strike was essential to the plot, and it was only because Marty knew the exact date and time that the tower would be struck that he was able to warn Doc about the future terrorist attack. When Marty slipped in the letter warning of the terrorist attack doc asked him what the meaning of it was marty simply oh yeah what is the meaning of this <laughs> marty simply replied you'll find out aren't they doing this in the rain this scene happens in the rain 
You'll find out in 30 years. He then traveled back to the future, leaving a giant flaming 911 on the pavement behind him. Okay, it was technically just the 11 that was flaming as it was made from the tire tracks, but the 9 was lit up on a neon sign directly next to the left of the flaming 11. Within the context of the aforementioned scene, 30 years was when the terrorist attack would take place, but from the vantage point of 1985, 30 years into the future was 2015. This was also the setting of Back to the Future 2, October 2015. Inside Marty's, we're almost 10 years. I remember when Back to the Future Day happened and it was like, Ooh, exciting. We're nearly 10 years away from that. Ah, I'm getting old. Ah. Inside Marty's home, there was a scene with a TV screen depicting the Twin Pines. As director Robert Zemeck... Zeme oh, I know this director. He's directed loads of stuff. Zemeckis? Zemeckis? Tried to warn us all in the first movie, the Twin Pines were the Twin Towers. This was made even more clear in the sequel when the image of the Twin Pines on the television was suddenly replaced with an image of the Twin Towers. But 2015 wasn't just the setting of the movie's sequel. Marty told us we'd find out what the meaning of all of this was in 30 years, and in October of 2015, Robert Zemeckis would reveal the true meaning with the release of his film The Walk. The scene in Back to the Future, when Marty slipped the letter into Doc's coat, was the same scene in which Doc was attaching a wire to the tower that was going to be struck. <laughs> what? Was the same... Oh, okay, so it's in the same scene. Okay, I got it. I got a big brain. I'm following. The Walk was a movie about attaching a wire to the Twin Towers, the towers that were struck on 9-11. Oh, The Walk was the movie where the guy walks across it, right, on the tightrope. It was fine. It was fine. In the walk, we can see Marty McFly as he stood atop the towers. Sure, the character was named Philippe Petit, and he was based on a real person, but he was wearing the exact same clothing as Marty. At the end of Back to the Future, Marty ran back through the street to confront Doc. It was the Marty from 2015, the one that had just stood atop the Twin Towers in The Walk. This is getting crazy and obviously made up. <laughs> So while Doc was rigging a wire to a tower, Marty left him a warning about a terrorist attack that would take place in 30 years. The Marty from 2015 then returned to 1955, and the same Marty that had stood atop the World Trade Center after rigging a wire to the towers ran through the flaming 9-11 in the street following a tower strike. I can't believe anyone who actually saw this didn't realize it was satire or actually believes it to be true, because it's obviously insane. It's also obvious in hindsight that it's amazing that any of us missed this warning. If all these weird messages weren't enough, the exact runtime of Back to the Future is 116 minutes. As we already learned, 116 upside down is 9-11. Zemeckis was doing everything he could to make this prediction of the 9-11 terrorist attack obvious to the public, and as promised, he told us what the meaning of it was 30 years after the release of the film. Big question here, if old Robert there knew about it, why didn't he just be like, yeah, 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 vision from the future, instead of like hiding it in some mysterious movie and not doing anything to prevent it? Answer me that! The walk was his confession of the attempt to warn the public about 9-11. This all just leaves a question, how did Zemeckis know? I spent a fair amount of time researching time travel for another channel. I can tell you that traveling backwards in time is almost certainly impossible. But Zemeckis didn't need to travel in time himself. The terrorist attack on 9-11 was the most watched event in human history. According to the documentary, this made it a massive terrestrial meditation, concentrating collective consciousness onto a single space-time focal point, making 9-11 humanity's most potent consciousness stargate. Oh, okay, so when you don't have science, you just use fiction. Because Zemeckis was a precognitive conduit, he was able to pick up on the message that was being medi meditated to him from the future. The theory keeps on going. <laughs> Does it have to, though, Kevin? Does it have to? Can't we just write this off as insane and move on? <laughs> oh, man. Yes! What's wrong with people? It even incorporates 2001 A Space Odyssey for no discernible reason at all. What I love about this is how perfectly it matches to the logic of genuine conspiracy theories, except better. It confuses the viewer by making dubious connections between events while constantly repeating certain things, such as the Twin Pines being the Twin Towers. The creator of the video said that it took all of his creativity to make, but it was also absolutely worth it, and I highly recommend watching the original documentary. Of course, a lot of this stuff wasn't really true. The terrorist attack in Back to the Future wasn't a surprise at all. It was inevitable. Doc promised to build the Libyans a nuclear bomb and stole their plutonium to build his time machine. He was absolutely expecting them. The Twin Pines becoming the Lone Pine was just a silly time travel gang. When Marty was back in 1955, he accidentally destroyed one of the two baby pine trees for which them all was named. Then, of course, there's the whole precognition thing. If you want to believe in mysticism bullshit, well, that's up to you. <laughs> But you shouldn't. But it's worth noting that 9-11 was not the most viewed human event in history. It's not even in the top 30, falling well below the O.J. Simpson high-speed chase. I find that hard to believe, but okay. No, I didn't. 
Oh. But since conspiracy theories normally don't stand up to the scrutiny of facts and observation anyway, it doesn't matter that there was the occasional lie thrown into this documentary. What? There was a lie in the document? No. While I still believe that the creator of Birds Aren't Real is an absolute legend, as far as I'm concerned, this Back to the Future 9-11 connection is now the gold standard for everything a satirical conspiracy theory should be. And that's where we finally end today's video. In a way, I'm kind of relieved there's only a couple of these because they are insane things for insane people. Thank you for watching. The solar system, the universe, the Earth, and all humans are composed of plus zero antipodes and equal to nothing if added as a one or entity. What the fuck is this?